Love is pretty hard to sum up. It's hard to describe. Like, like, like love. I don't know how to explain it. Love feels like a warm rainbow in your soul when you meet someone you like. The signs that two people are falling in love is when they look at each other a lot. Love me. <laughs> I love my parents. I love Jesus. I love my brother. I love video games. I love food. Rice. Um, couscous to be exact. <laughs> His girlfriend! <laughs> I said too much. Sometimes love just grosses me out. Sometimes love is filled with drama. The boys will just go up to the girls and be like, hey, I like you. And then it's either a rejection or not a rejection. There's a lot of rejections in my grade. I had to friend zone a lot of people. Love is confusing. Step one, show that you actually care about them. Step two, wait till Valentine's Day and get them chocolates. Step three, fall in love. Happily ever after. Love is really just a way of showing people how you care about them. Love means like being there for your family. Now, I show my family love by either helping them by watering the plants or making my bed in the morning. Giving them a hug maybe, because it's kind of what I do. We can show love to the earth by not polluting the ocean and saving endangered animals. I know God loves me because he died on the cross for me. I know that God loves me because he created me. Love is kindness, it's joy, it's comfort, and it's what God is. I love you. I love you. <laughs> no, no. Will you come to prayer with me this morning? Gracious God, as we trust your word, especially in these times when we don't know what to say or to pray, let us trust what is in our hearts as we share love with others. Whether we know them or not, let us understand what love really is and what love can and is in our hearts. We thank you this day that your love is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit and through the gift you give us each and every day. I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay and mold them into the words that need to be spoken on this day, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray, amen. So this morning we continue our three-week series, What is Love? And last week we learned the word neighbor can have many different meanings, as well as how we treat those that we call neighbor. Last week we saw some of these answers from the story of the Good Samaritan and that our neighbor is not necessarily the person who lives next door to us or even down the hall. We learn that this word neighbor can have such a wide gap of meanings but basically defines itself as people. It means that the person that completely looks opposite of us. It may be the meaning of the person that you don't even get along with. It means the person that thinks differently or even acts differently than each of us. Love your neighbor means to love people. We've been asking the question, what is love? And Paul somewhat answers this question as we heard in our scripture lesson this morning. Paul, you know, who wrote many of the books in the New Testament, answers it in a letter as he is writing it to the people of Corinth. As a reminder that this letter is incredibly old, over 2,000 years, but this morning as we're going to see that those words that we hear still apply even today. So what is love? Love is patient, love is kind, Love is not jealous, it does not put on airs, and it is not snobbish, and it is never rude or self-seeking. It is not prone to anger, nor does it brood over its injuries. Love doesn't rejoice in what is wrong, but rejoices in the truth. There is no limit to the love's forbearance, to its trust, its hope, 
and its power for us to endure. So this morning I'm going to try to unpack some of these words from Paul as written to the people of Corinth and what it truly is. The very first thing we hear from Paul is, love is patient. And patience is an art of knowing how to wait for it. I will say that there is so much confusion around the word patience, and a lot of times people think that we're supposed to be sitting here, twiddling our thumbs, and sitting here and just waiting. But the art of all this is the science of waiting. And sadly, out of the force of nature and who we are as human beings, we often jump the gun, not seeing what God is doing in our life. Instead, we jump the gun and say, I'm going to tell you what is wrong about you and what is wrong about this, instead of waiting for God to work within our life so we can see what is tempted in those things that are trying to be fixed. Sometimes we even jump to conclusions without making good decisions or we jump into those relationships because we're impatient. But it's the art of knowing when to wait to bring whatever is right into our lives. Patience is the art of knowing how to wait for it. And the ability to trust God, knowing that God will give us that clarity in those next steps that we need to take. It's so often hard to do that, I know. I can say from my own experiences that patience is a very difficult thing to uphold and to try to do. Paul also tells us that love is kind, and here's what kindness is. Kindness is that abundance that meets the need. You see, kindness sees a deficiency, and it helps to lift it up. It lifts up that deficiency. Kindness lifts up. When you see someone who is down, it's kindness that actually goes towards that person and offers that person a word and reminds them of who they were created to be. That's what kindness is. Kindness lifts people up through our words. Do your words lift people up? Or are your words the words that sometimes tear people down? We live in a society where words don't really matter much anymore these days because people just spew them out without even thinking half the time what they are saying. And those same words oftentimes are the words that bring people down. So what if we were people who used the power of words that come out of our mouths to lift people up? That's what kindness does. It lifts people up to new levels in their life when we express and show that kindness to one another. Maybe it's that God that has been so good to you that you have those resources and that you maybe know someone who is in need and you actually go to that person, that person who may be struggling or needs those resources that God has entrusted within you that you can actually do something about it. You go to that individual who is actually in need and you actually help them meet that need. You lift them up out of the troubles that they are currently in. That's what kindness does in our lives. Kindness lifts people up. So the question is, what is love? And Paul uses two words to answer that question. Paul tells us love is patient and love is kind. I often ask myself why Paul would use these two words to describe what love is, and I believe it's because Paul has given us a beautiful picture of God, and in this response, of our God who is good to each of us. This is what I love about. Love is patient and love is kind. I want to take a moment to share but what love is not. And sadly, it's a pretty big list, or at least in my mind, but love is not envious, or boastful, or prideful, or dishonorable, or self-seeking, or easily angered, or having that delight of having evil. Paul tells us that love is none of these things, especially having that jealousy in our lives, or being envious, wanting what the other person has that we don't. We often want what we can't have or don't have, and when that happens, it doesn't allow us to celebrate God's glory. And that's not what Paul is saying. 
Paul is saying love is celebrating. When we see other people's success, we should be successful in celebrating those and cheer those people on and say, great job, keep on going. Paul also tells us that love isn't prideful. So often we are those people who want to be someone that we're not. Someone that is hiding behind something, not showing who the real you is into the world. So be you. Be that person that God has made you to be in life. What love isn't, it isn't us easily being angered. That emotion that lies within us so many times brings the worst in us to the surface. And a lot of times that surface that folks do not love. Paul also tells us that love isn't a scorekeeper. It doesn't sit there and keep tabs on the wrongs that we do and the rights that we do, let alone the wrongs that others do in their lives as well. Love isn't when we're out there keeping score between us and others in our life. We talked this morning on what love is and what love isn't. And now, what love does. So this is what love does in our life. And Paul tells us that love rejoices in the truth. And that means that we need to be kind, uh, be the kind of church and the kind of people that are always celebrating. We need to be celebrating in our lives. We need to have that redemption within ourselves as well as others. But what else does love do? It is that it rejoices in its truth and that's what it does. Paul says that love always protects. Love always protects and that it doesn't mean physically, but it also means spiritually. You know, the word actually a protect in the original language means a roof or a covering or a shelter. And that's our role as Christians is to protect those that we love, not just physically, but spiritually at the same time. Paul says that love always hopes, and that hope is a vision of what could be. Hope is what is possible, and with that, we can't lose hope and focus on what the could be's could. Love also perseveres. We need to keep going and keep doing until we see the vision down the road. Whatever that vision may be of a better future or whatever that vision could be in your life, we need to tell ourselves that I'm not going to stop until I see that vision realize. We need to stay focused on those who have that perseverance and to keep moving forward with our own perseverance because love doesn't give up on us. Love doesn't quit. We never stop praying, we never stop hoping, and we continue to affirm with God that yes, I believe that God is the power and that it can change our hearts. And I believe anything is possible in the trust that I have in my perseverance and my love for God. Finally, Paul tells us that love never fails. When we truly believe in that, when we believe that the love never fails in our life, we will have no problem believing the rest. So that's a little about what love is, what love isn't, and what love does in our life. And as I bring us back to that one thing that we can do each and every day, I want to share something from Philippians that we can do for people right now, this moment, and every moment moving forward. We need to value others about our, above ourselves and not looking at our own interests, but each of us looking at the interests of others as well. You see, here's the challenge or that component that Christ calls us to do in our lives. Not just saying the words, but actually getting out there and doing something about what we do and do it with love. Folks, it's not all about the warm and fuzzies that we have, but instead it's about our decisions our choices and that we have to decide to love when we have done that and we have to decide to forgive decide to accept and to bless and to respect and to be all those inspirations to others in our life 
because God's greatest gift is us, the people of God. And like I said last week, I don't think that there is any of us that hasn't looked into another person's eyes that God didn't care about or love. God's greatest treasure is the people. So we need to be that treasure or the people who step out of our insecurities, out of our embarrassment, out of our awkwardness. And in order to do that, to step forward, we need to love people well. We need to be that type of church, that type of people, while we look into people's eyes and generally care about them and do what we do as God would do. Let's notice people and notice what they are possibly facing while extending that love to others. So as we draw near into entering the season of Lent, let us be reminded of that love that Christ showed for us as he journeyed to the cross, for that love is continually shown each and every moment. Blessings upon you this day, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen.